Hello from Los Angeles, everyone. I'm your host, Gia Nortas. You're watching TRT2. Welcome to the world of cinema. Today, our guest is Tom Curley. Hi, Tom. Hi, thanks for having me. I wonder, in such an amazing career that you have chosen for yourself, why sound? It's uh, something that's always fascinated me. The power that sound has to affect the emotion of a film is, is something that I find very attractive. Um, and also the technical aspects of it are something that um, I just came to me very easily, you know, that I have a good understanding of it. I found that as I started to work with it, I became more fascinated and um, I've just turned it into a, a career. Mm. Your career is, uh, began um, in early 2000s? Uh, yeah, um, I started working in broadcast television and uh, I found a mentor in film uh, right around the year 2000 and began uh, targeting my, my career towards filmmaking. And, and then at the end of 2001, I, I moved to Los Angeles from New York and began pursuing film production full time. It's been a long time since then. And yes. The world of cinema, the world of sound has changed enormously. A whole lot. Yeah, yeah. What, so what's the difference between when you began and what it is now? Well, um, much in the same way that film was analog and is now mostly shot on digital machines, virtually all production audio is recorded on a digital device now. Uh, it used to be recorded on reel-to-reel -reel tape, mm -hmm. um, which means that we would have uh, you know, a stack of tapes that we would have to change throughout the day. and. You could only record one or two tracks of audio at a time, so the mixing on set was a much more critical thing. Um, if that was messed up, there's no going back. You have to either re-record it or throw it away and do something different. Um, but now, we record everything on hard drives, and it's common for recorders to have six, eight, twelve tracks. And what that means is that everything stays isolated. like. My microphone, your microphone, his microphone, they're all separate. And you can mix them together and make a normal mix like you are supposed to. But if something is wrong, you can take individual pieces from each of those tracks and put it back in how it should be. Mm -hmm. So uh, those things are massive uh, time and money savers, uh, which is something producers like. So is there a creative side to what you do? Absolutely. The, uh, the creative side comes from uh, analyzing the script, the camera shots, the director's and the actor's desires, uh, the individual acoustic qualities of the locations that we're filming in. Uh, all that comes down to how we choose what microphones to use, where to place them. And, uh, a lot of that reflects tonally the the way that the film sounds and also the the um, accurate recording of the actor's performance which mm -hmm. is what we really want to capture mm -hmm. with the the most truth mm -hmm. that I'm sure that's incredibly important yeah yeah the modern world of cinema di di with digitalization came incredible speed yes so um, what is the upside and perhaps downside right. of that? Um, well, the, the main upside for producers is that um, not only is there much more speed in production, but there's also less um, time required in post-production, less, um, less people required. Um, because on analog, you would need um, people to make copies, people to change from the analog tape to magnetic film um, to edit with, and all kinds of different stuff. Now, I take a little card and I hand it to somebody, they put it in a hard drive, and off it goes to the editor. It's, it's good super go. quick, super cheap, mm -hmm. reliable. Um, like, there used to be all kinds of just minute little problems that could pop up anywhere. Um, and a lot of that has been erased. Um, so quality is up, reliability is up, cost is down, 
speed is up. There's almost no downside to it. The only downside really is that um, the discipline of, of making everything perfect and excellent every single time um, is no longer as important as it used to be mm -hmm. because everything's so much easier to fix now. The human factor. Yeah. And preparation too. Like there's a lot of productions that are happy to like not plan everything as, as much as they used to and just sort of feel it out and um, it helps with spontaneity on the set, but sometimes it also causes problems. I can see that. Yeah. When you work together with your team, how do you distribute um, responsibilities? On a sound crew, there's generally three people. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a reality show or something, it's just one person, so there's no <laughs> dictating of anything. It's all me. But on a film, um, we have a three-person crew, and... Uh, so I would be at the cart mixing and recording everything. Then I have a boom operator who uh, takes the microphone and holds it over the actors. A utility person who um, is responsible for uh, putting wireless mics on actors, sometimes running a second boom microphone, uh, hiding microphones on the set, uh, running cables, fixing things sometimes if they get broken, and then just um, sort of general logistics and stuff. So that's, that's usually the way it goes. I feel like I should have let you mic us. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, no, they did good. In the earlier days, particularly for independent films, in, um, the distribution of work was very, very particular right. amongst the sound crew. But today it's kind of more integrated and a lot of the times one person does a lot of um, a lot of things. So. Sure. On the film side, uh, the reason that they had so much specialization in every little job was because if, because every little job was so important that if one thing got messed up, it could affect 10 other parts of the film. It could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but now digitization has brought the cost of everything down so much that that's not as much of a, of a risk. Also, uh, crew sizes and budgets have gone down, so it, a lot of times it falls on a department head to pick up some jobs that maybe their uh, workers would do, uh, especially on like uh, documentary crews, like I've been helping put lights up and all kinds of things like that. Um, but, you know, it, that's something that, um, that you make a choice as a, as a freelance worker to accept or not. Mm -hmm. And um, fortunately, most of the time now, I'm working on bigger budget things where it's not an issue. But um, you know, it, it's part of the, the collaborative nature of this thing that we do. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, sometimes if, if it's a person that's just trying to make their dream come true, Nobody has any problem helping somebody do that, but if it's somebody who's pulling up in a Ferrari and, you know, just uh, is just trip. being cheap, yeah. that's a whole different yeah. story. Yeah, I, I get, yeah, I get <laughs> that. The world has changed. The war we're fighting today needs a different kind of soldier. We need people with the skills and the attitude to take on threats we don't even know exist. We need someone who can walk into a tornado and come out the other side like it was a damn gentle breeze. Clearly, two most crucial elements to filmmaking is visual and audio. Yes. And visual is literally visual right there on the screens for people to see. Audio, you absorb it, but you don't really pay attention to it as much as an audience. If we do our job right, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so could you tell us about the process? How do you work with the director? Well, a lot of that comes in pre-production before we're on set. Um, 
I'll read the scripts, I'll analyze how many people are in each scene, and then uh, I'll talk to the director about what kind of special shots that they want. You know, if we're doing something that's very complicated, then it's important to work out all the details ahead of time so that we're not wasting time on set trying to figure things out. Also, if there's a uh, post-production audio person that's been hired at that point, I always like to talk to them and uh, figure out what sort of um, requirements they have uh, or if they want us to record any wild sounds on set of specific things, otherwise they have to find it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So m most of that is about preventing problems for, mm -hmm. for the film. Your work has incredible track record, so you, you make very little mistake, like no errors, things like that. So are there like any funny stories there? I did a... Uh, one, of the, one of the biggest um, risks for us is when things are live. Um, if, if you can't cut the camera, if you can't do a take two, then perfection becomes much more important. Mm -hmm. And when I'm just recording, as long as it's a quiet place, that's fine. But then if you add speakers, like if there's an audience mm -hmm. and you're amplifying this person's voice, that can create a whole lot of problems. And uh, if the wrong microphones are used or, you know, whatever, it can cause feedback. And um, so I did a promotional event for the TV show Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. And they wanted uh, 10 people on stage, a huge audience, speakers, live sound. And I told the uh, producer exactly what kind of microphones to get and they got the wrong ones. So I had a backup plan, but he, they, they wanted to go with the, the microphones that they rented at first. And there's a thousand people in the audience, all the stars come out, the interviewer, I bring it up once and just <laughs> feedback. Everybody's like, I don't know. And, um, it's because they had the wrong microphone. Yeah. So I had my assistant run up with the handhelds and they did the rest of the show with those and it worked out fine. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's one of my worst nightmares. <laughs> I can imagine. You have made some pretty incredible movies, Thank including you. Whiplash. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you brought your Oscar with you, right? I did. Yeah. Can That's we take it? a look? Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so... Do you want to hold it? I would love to hold it, of Heavy. course. Oh, wow! Who <laughs> <laughs> Oscar goes to? <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Um, I will take a picture with that, and you. Okay. Yes. So which one of... The project that you, the, the incredible project that you've been part of actually hold special place in your heart. Sure. Well, Whiplash obviously, um, you know, changed my life forever, and um, I I feel super lucky to be. Other than that one, um, I mean, there's so many. Uh, I just finished working on a TV show with Kevin Costner called Yellowstone. Hmm which um, has been a really awesome experience. Um, but almost every show that I've been on has had some sort of cathartic uh, adventure for me, you know, whether it's flying to Korea to make a movie called Dragon Wars mm -hmm. or, um, you know, traveling to Jamaica or Colombia or Bermuda. It's always an adventure in, in some way. And I try to make you know, the best experience out of every single one of them. Um, but Whiplash really was um, something special in, in a lot of ways. Like from the, f the first time I read the script, it was the fastest I've ever read any script because I was so engaged in, in, in the story. And Damien Chazelle is one of the most um, focused and talented directors I've ever met. 
he's, uh, he's quite an amazing guy. Mm -hmm. And so the opportunity to work with him and J.K. Simmons and Miles Teller, you know, I, I just got to sort of watch magic happen in front of me and it was, it was awesome. Yeah. And when Whiplash won an Oscar, yeah. how did you feel? I was surprised to be honest. Um, and the reason for that is that Whiplash was a three and a half million dollar film that we shot in 19 days. And I was in competition with Interstellar, mm -hmm. um, which was a $150 million film. I was also in competition with Birdman and American Sniper. The amount of marketing money that they have was more than the entire budget of Whiplash, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was convinced at that time that it, that it was uh, predetermined that somebody else would win. And then they called us. Like, I've never passed out before, <laughs> but, but I almost did. It, oh, it's, wow. it's, uh, it's, it was an overwhelmingly positive experience. Like, there's video of it on YouTube, you know, you can go watch, but um, I look like I'm just terrified, <laughs> you know? Tom Curly passed out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, you know, after that, it was just the biggest adrenaline rush. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll always have that, that uh, achievement to, to be proud of, you know? First of many, hopefully. Yeah, we'll see. It's amazing that awards like that actually acknowledge smaller budget films. And yeah. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. And it, it really um, emphasizes the fact that it's about the craft mm -hmm. and not about the money side of it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's refreshing. Yeah. So how much of the actor's drumming performance was actually on set? Uh, a large part of that was real. Really? Yes. Um, there was a lot of the other instruments that were pre-recorded. Mm -hmm. um, but the drums had to be live mm -hmm. because um, well, like, you can't hit something and have it not make a sound. You can't hit a, a metal cymbal with a drumstick and have it be silent. Mm -hmm. They tried, they, um, but it, nothing, it didn't look real. Mm -hmm. All the drumming was done live, and Miles Teller actually um, was given jazz drumming lessons for, I think, four months before Mm -hmm. filming started he had already known how to play rock and roll drums and stuff like that but he learned every single chart for whiplash and uh all the other songs that they featured mm -hmm. but the rest of the music was mostly playback so you said you've made movies all over the world yes have you been to turkey yet no no S someday i hope yeah hopefully that'd be some place interesting for you to make a, to make a movie oh absolutely yeah i mean um the uh the, the thing for me is um like i i always want to see a culture and a place that i haven't seen before and turkey's got so much history and culture and art and amazing like architecture and um like everything I've seen on television and in film is, is beautiful. So why wouldn't I want to work there? Yeah, definitely. It's a gorgeous place. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Tom. Oh, it's really been my pleasure. happy to see you here and, and have a uh, very interesting conversation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching The World of Cinema. We'll be back next week on TRT2. Mm -hmm.